Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. If you follow me on Twitter, if you don't, T underscore Patia, make sure you go follow me. But if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I already spoke about releasing a personal video, which I really wanted to share with you all. And yeah, so let's get started. So there's parts of my life which I don't show you all. And honestly, I was questioning if I should even say this or not. But truth is that, you know, I'm human and I have the fear of being judged for the life that I have. Don't get me wrong, I'm not affected by haters. Their opinions do not hold any value to me, so it doesn't mess with my head. But this thing I was a little bit more private about, and I feel like it's time that I'm honest and open with you guys on my life. So when my parents came to Canada, they moved into a basement in Malton. If you're from Ontario, you know exactly where that is. But they moved into this basement and they ended up buying furniture from the previous owner for about $80 including utensils, bedroom furniture, shelf, etc, etc. And my dad had no vehicle, so he'd constantly go to downtown Toronto to apply for jobs. He'd be taking three to four different buses, did that on a daily basis. My mom didn't know many people here at all. Actually, she didn't even know anyone at that time, except for the people who lived within that house. But my dad constantly got rejected over and over again. People didn't believe that he had what it takes. Um, people, you know, to be honest, they were, there was a lot of racism. Throughout many interviews, my dad has spoken about all the rejections he has faced. This became my driving force in my life. I've chosen a career within acting and constantly you are told no, you're rejected for your looks, you're rejected for many, many different reasons. But this really pushed me to understand that I need to have Many small doors slammed in my face so that one big door opens up and I'm able to walk right through it because I was ready for it. And that's something that he has taught me, my dad has taught me. And I feel like it was really important to share it with you all. For any of you guys who have a goal or you know things you wanna achieve in life, you're gonna face a lot of rejection and you're gonna face a lot of people's opinions. You have to stay true to yourself and you have to keep moving forward because every single obstacle you come across is actually going to become your driving force in life. Anyways, back to the story. So that time in my parents' life was extremely rough because as you guys know, if you watch my adoption video, my mom has severe arthritis and my dad couldn't get a job. And it was really hurtful because a lot of people, you know, they talk, people in the community talk. And they said that, this is what my mom told me last night when I was talking to her. They said to my dad that this woman didn't bring any luck into your life because she got severe arthritis after. My dad couldn't get a job, but my parents didn't let that affect them. And my dad applied and applied over and over again, even though he got rejected with a mechanical engineer and solar engineering degree. But then one day, one day, he got that call that he has been offered a job as a full-time salesman at a Hyundai dealership in Rexdale. So while applying for these jobs, of course, you have to make a living and you have to survive. So my dad did several odd jobs throughout his time until he could land something that was proper. Finally, he had this wonderful job. Lo and behold, racism. Many people did not want to work with him and they didn't believe in him. They just judged him for who he was. He ended up selling a record. Within three months, he sold 127 cars. 127 cars, that's insane. So I know that was a record back then and I'm pretty sure it's still a record now. If I'm wrong, let me know. But regardless, I'm so proud of him. That's insane. That's just, it makes me so happy to know that. So the management at Hyundai took notice and they offered my dad a new position at a new location. And so he shifted to that new location and of course, many people left because they did not want to work under an individual who wore a turban. But you know what's pretty amazing? There's been a couple of people who started working with him when he first moved to that new location and they're still with him today. Finally, my parents were able to afford a home on their own. And so in that new beautiful home was my grandparents, my mom, and my dad. But one thing was missing. You got it, it was me. So my parents decided to adopt a child and they brought me into this loving, beautiful home. So while growing up, I watched my dad's career transition to something even greater, something that I don't think any of her family members even imagined could have happened. And by this time, we were able to afford much nicer things. And I remember, even as a child, and my parents can vouch for this, even as a child, I would say to my parents when I was about nine, 10 years old that I wanna be able to take care of you guys. And they used to tell me, we don't expect anything from you. But truth is, I want the satisfaction that I can take care of them mentally, financially, emotionally, every single way. 
And I know they don't need that, but it's just something that, it's a way of me giving back to such wonderful parents. In the late 90s, when my father was given the name of Superfan by Isaiah Thomas of the Raptors, things began to change even more. Business was running well, we were able to move into a new place in a much nicer area. Now this area, there were a lot of large homes. Our house was not as large as those homes, but it was a house that had a bedroom for each individual. Now, that's pretty cool. Sadly, my grandfather passed away a couple of years before we moved into the new house. And so in the new house was my grandmother, my dad, my mom, and I. And there were two things missing, two adorable cute things. And that was my two beautiful German Shepherds. My grandmother passed away many years later in that house. And about five years ago, my life took a whole different turn, which, which was a pretty difficult time. So I told you guys before that I have seen my mom in pain and I constantly would mask this pain because I didn't want to hurt in front of her and I didn't want to cry. I would look at her hands or, you know, something like that and it would just affect me. And now my mom knows clearly because I know mom, you're watching this. But my life took a different turn because my dad was in pain. The man that protected me and gave me such a wonderful life was in pain. And I know you can't control health conditions, but I wish that I could have just taken his pain away. That was a really, um, sorry. That was a really tough time that my family and I went through. He had, um, basically I was in LA studying acting and my mom was constantly calling my dad every single day and she'd always ask him, how are you? So I kind of picked up some things up because they don't just talk and say, how are you? How are you feeling right now? That's not how they talk. I picked up the phone once and I heard my dad saying that he's not well, he's in pain and I said on the phone, I said, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. And so my dad asked my mom to explain to me what was happening. And my dad had a kidney stone, which didn't end up passing naturally. It scratched a tube within him and caused a lot of damage. So he needed to have surgery, but my dad decided that he wanted to figure out other methods in order to heal himself so that he doesn't have to be out for at least a month because recovery would have taken a long time and he put us first he put his family first and basketball because it was basketball season at the time now you know he is a true crazy fan but yeah it was a really tough time in our lives and my mom and i were extremely disturbed my dad would go to work every day he'd go to his basketball games and nobody knew that underneath his shirt and his pants were tubes that were inserted inside of him. And he was in a lot of pain. And he did that for many, many months. He would come home, my mom and I and my cousin would take care of him. And I just couldn't bear to see, I couldn't, I couldn't bear to see my father in going through such a thing. And I know none of you guys can either. Seeing somebody that you love hurting, it's just the worst thing in the world. Many months passed and my dad realized that there's no other option because his pain is not going away. So he knew he had to get surgery. And luckily the surgery date that he got was after his basketball season had ended. So the surgery date was set. And before that, my dad brought my family and I to this new house. And the real estate agent was a friend. So my dad was like, you know, let's just get a tour of this place. And I thought, wow, okay. Okay, this is a home you would see in like Beverly Hills or something like that. And as a kid, I used to show my dad all these pictures and videos of all these wonderful homes. And I said, dad, one day I'm gonna work so hard that I am going to get a home like this for you guys. And my dad said, we don't need a home like this. We're happy in what we have. And I said, okay, that's, you know, that's what it is. And I, I love that, but I wanna know that I'm able to take care of you guys and take care of the many kids that I wanna adopt in my future. Now the surgery date came and the doctor told me that if there's any complications, then the surgery will go longer. So I was waiting in that waiting room for a long time and I would see all these doctors come in and out to other people and tell them their family member is in recovery. And that's when I started getting anxious because the hours that were given to us for the surgery, it passed. The surgery went longer than expected. So I knew there were some complications and I started freaking out. I started thinking of the worst things in my life and I was like, how am I gonna survive without my father? I just, my mind went to such a bad place because I was so scared. But eventually the doctor came out and said that he is in recovery and there were some complications, but he will be fine. Sorry guys, my camera died and the sun clearly isn't cooperating with me right now. So 
Oh well. While my dad was in recovery, he had a dream that his mother told him that there's something special about this new place, that you need to get this new place. And he made me call a real estate agent and he ended up signing a deal to this new house. So the truth is, you guys constantly ask me for a house tour and trust me, I would love to give you guys one. But the thing is, this is not just a home for us. This home is a product of my dad's hard work. He has struggled really hard and he has worked so hard and attained such a wonderful place and wonderful life position for his family. My struggle is going to be different. You know, your struggle is going to be different. We, in my opinion, I feel like we live a privileged struggle life, you can say, because we're not gonna go through what our parents went through or what the previous generation went through. They fought for our rights as a human being to be able to live, to survive. Right now, we're fighting other things with everything that's going on around the world but still they have to deal with worse scenarios. So this house is his home. And one day when I work that hard to the point where I can afford a beautiful home, I promise you, I will give you that house tour. My dad wanted me to tell you one thing and that was to enjoy the process, enjoy the journey of life. All the negative obstacles that come in your life, it's how you react to them that defines you. So it's very important to constantly keep pushing forward, keep your eye on the prize and don't let other people's opinions affect how you want to live your life. Point behind this video is that I wanted you guys to understand why there was a part of my life I was unable to share and now I feel so much more comfortable about it because as life goes on I'm learning and I'm growing too and coming from a good income household comes with a lot of judgment. People always end up looking at the top of the mountain. They don't realize the problems and hard work and struggles that you know were there to create that mountain to help build it up. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about this video. And also, I think it would be very interesting if you guys could share some of the struggles that your families have gone through. So yeah, let's create that conversation. Sending you guys all the positive vibes in the world. And also, I'm gonna be in India. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Adoption is such a beautiful thing.